afternoon to join us here at Duncan Parnell. My name is York Grow, and we're once again going to have one of our asset management webinar series sessions. Uh, today we have a special guest. Tafiq Ahmed is going to be joining us from Trimble Positioning Services to talk about RTX. A couple of housekeeping things to get started with. The session will be recorded today. Uh, that recording will be made available to you that are here joining us today, but also be made available to those that signed up and for whatever reason may not be able to join. It will also be posted on our website at duncan-parnell.com so that there are others that you would like to listen to this session or some of our other sessions, um, feel free to pass them the link uh, to where these sessions will be recorded. Um, we will have everybody muted at the, through the webinar. Feel free to use the chat window to enter any kind of questions you may have as we're going along. And then we'll make sure that Tofiq uh, can answer those either during the session or more likely at the end. Um, at the end, we will encourage you to unmute yourself and answer questions that you may have about RTX or some of the information that Tofiq has passed along to you today. Um, I think that's about it. With no further ado, I will turn it over to you, Tofiq. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, York. Welcome, everybody. So my, my name is Tofiq, and I'll be speaking about high accuracy positioning using for GNSS corrections. And then I'll do a, a bit more of a deep dive into the Trimble RTX technology and services. So the key takeaways for after attending today's session will be a better understanding of the benefits of correction services and how to achieve high accuracy positioning for your mapping projects and a more detailed overview of Trimble RTX, the benefits, the use cases, and how it integrates into the overall Trimble solution. This is our uh, agenda for today. Uh, I'll get started with corrections. But before I do that, we have a poll question. So in the chat window, uh, Marissa will post a link to a Slido um, website where you'll see a chat question. Uh, please go ahead and answer that poll question. Marissa, could you paste that again? And as, as we have that answered, I, uh, Marissa will go through the results as well. So the, the question is, how familiar are you with Trimble RTX? So we're starting to have some answers come through and I'll let a few of you go ahead and click on that link to answer this first poll question. We'll give it another few seconds. All right, so it looks like we have gotten, oh, we still have some answers coming through, okay. <laughs> So, so far, the majority of people are saying that they've heard of Trimble RTX, but they have no idea how it works. Um, we have about one or two people so far that know a lot about RTX, but definitely the majority have heard of it, but aren't really sure how it works. Okay. Well, that's great. So, you can shut that poll down, um, and I'll, I think that's a great response. So, uh, those of you that have answered that you know a little bit about it. Uh, or you've heard of it, but don't know too much about it, you'll find out quite a bit from this webinar. So starting off with corrections, um, I'll start off very basically and kind of evolve into explaining how Trimble RTX works. So you take a, a standard GNSS receiver, for example, the Trimble R2, and you're, you take it outside, you're tracking the GNSS satellites, um, nothing else is assisting you you'll receive about three to five meters of accuracy. Now, we, we don't consider this high accuracy per se. This is autonomous positioning. Um, it's not necessarily suitable for most professional applications, but due to the low accuracy, it's also not quite very repeatable. In order to have high accuracy positioning, you need some type of correction. So SPAS may be um, a method of correction that, corrections that you use today. It is available in uh, a lot of continental regions around the world. In the US, we have the WAS system, and it's a free service that's available. So you're tracking a geostationary satellite, which provides some information that allows you to get a more accurate solution. 
Typically, this will be in the one to three meter range, depending on your receiver uh, that you're using. Again, I, I don't necessarily consider this high accuracy. If you want to get through a lot more practical applications, you need better accuracy and precision. The, the benefits of this, it's, it is satellite delivered. It's available continentally uh, if you have clear view of the sky. Um, the accuracy isn't great, neither is the repeatability. And the constellation support today is limited to GPS only. Um, a key benefit is the fact that it is free. Now on to RTK. So th this may be the most commonly used um, method of corrections to achieve high accuracy positioning. And how this works is, you, again, you're out, out with your rover receiver tracking the GNSS satellites. And then you have a second receiver that you set up configured over a known position. When you set it up over a known position, the receiver knows what it should be as well as the position that it calculates. Once it calculates that that position and figures out the difference from the truth, uh, it can provide that information as a correction to your rover. Typically, this is done by a radio um, connectivity. This is very precise and accurate uh, down to the centimeter level. And a lot of this is dependent on your proximity to the base station. So as long as your rover receiver is close to the base station, you'll achieve the most precise positioning. Um, so with, with the level of accuracy that I uh, am showing on this slide, the distance that you wanna be within the base station, typically around a few kilometers. You, you can get further, but there will be a degradation of accuracy the further away you get from the base station. You use mainly use radio connectivity to access those corrections. Um, it is very highly accurate and repeatable as long as your base station is correctly set up. Um, it's, not, it's not exactly a trivial process to set up a base station. There is some expertise required as well as some time required to be able to set up that base station, um, which may be required to be done every day. So the, the next method I want to talk about is VRS. So if you did not want to have to set up your own base station or use radio connectivity, you have, there are many regions around the world where people have set up their own VRS networks. So instead of a single base station, there's a network of stations. They're all connected um, to a central server, which is calculating corrections for an entire region. Those corrections are transmitted via internet and on your rover end, you'll need either a modem or a data plan or some internet connectivity to access those corrections. This is almost as good as RTK. Um, it's, it's quite accurate. The limitation in this case is you're not in control of the station itself, so you're, you cannot control your proximity to the base station. Similar to RTK, the further away you'd get from a station, your accuracy could degrade. But as long as you're within the network of stations, you'll typically receive approximately two centimeters uh, and three centimeters horizontal vertical accuracies. So this is suitable as long as you're within the cellular network coverage so that you have internet accessibility and you must be within a region that has a VRS network set up. The solution is very highly accurate and repeatable depending on the configuration and the setup of the VRS now networks themselves. Now, any Trimble-owned network, any of our partner reseller networks, those are always set up very reliably. Um, this is a subscription-based service, so a third party is setting up these networks and providing access to those corrections for you uh, on a, as a subscription. This is most often paid, but there are situations in some regions where the service is available for free. Exfil. I'll touch on this very quickly, um, and this is actually only available on our premium line of receivers. So here in this example, I've got an R12 pictured, also available on the R10, R10-2, R12i. Now the way this works, say you're using some sort of terrestrial correction like RTK via radio or VRS via internet. If for any reason you lose that connectivity to um, the radio or to the internet connection, you'll be able to continue positioning. And that's because while you're tracking those GNSS satellites, you're all, also tracking a geostationary XFIL satellite at the same time. So you're continuously re re receiving this information from the XFIL satellite. And 
when you lose connectivity to uh, the radio or the internet, and you lose your main correction, the data from the Exfil satellite allows you to propagate your position for a few more minutes. Now you start off with the position accuracy that you had with RTK or VRS, and then that solution slowly drifts over time. After five minutes, we cut it off because the drift gets very large. The next solution I want to talk about is RTX. So um, jumping from Xfil, where Xfil is used kind of as a backup, RTX would be your primary source of a correction. So in this situation, you don't have a base station at all, you don't set it up, you have no radio connectivity, there's no VRS network, there's no internet connectivity either. Similar to XFIL, there's a sat geostationary satellite providing data, and these are your corrections. As long as you have that satellite in your view, you're able to receive those corrections. This is very similar to how SFS positioning works. However, there's some very uh, big improvements relative to that. So the accuracy, first of all, you can receive, achieve is on the centimeter level. So down to two centimeters horizontal, which is very similar to both RTK and VRS, um, and then five centimeters vertical, which is a li little bit worse on the vertical side. Now, the main benefit of RTX is the fact that you can receive it via satellite delivery, um, which enables you to use it in a lot of situations where um, either internet connectivity is not available, or a VRS network is not available. But I do want to emphasize the fact that both internet and satellite delivery is possible. So the way this works is we have this global network of tracking stations. They feed into a central server that calculate corrections uh, globally. And then these corrections are sent to a satellite uplink, which is then set, sent to the satellite, um, that geostationary satellite and transmitted to your receiver. Simultaneously, the exact same corrections are available and delivered via internet, so you can access it that way as well. The benefits of RTX is it is ubiquitously available almost anywhere in the world. You do have both methods of delivery available. Um, it is high accuracy, globally repeatable, and similar to VRS, this is subscription-based. So I've gone over the main types of corrections uh, used today and available today for high accuracy positioning. Um, I understand that each project or job has different requirements uh, which are unique and varied. And based on that, there are several different types of corrections to choose from based on your needs and your budget and the accuracy that uh, is required. So now I'm gonna deep dive a bit more into Terminal RTX and how it integrates into the mapping and GIS solution. Before we get into that, I do have a second poll question. So it's gonna be the exact same link as before, and Marissa, if you, Marissa has already pasted it again. So if you can jump into that link in the chat window, there will be a poll that comes up, and please take a second to answer that. The question for this poll is, what kind of corrections are you using today? Or is it, how's that poll looking? We still have some answers coming in, so I'll give it another few seconds. All right, so get your answers in and I will lock the voting shortly. All right, so it looks like we got a lot of answers in. So they were kind of all over the place, but the most, um, over half the people said that they are using local or regional VRS right now. Okay, great. So I, th I think that's very good to hear. Uh, it's a very suitable correction to be used for high accuracy positioning. I do see that we, ha we do ha have a lot of SBAS users as well, um, as well as post-processing. So um, I hope again, uh, you'll be able to learn a little bit more about TripRTX and then see where it might provide some advantages that either VRS or WAS or SBAS are not able to deliver. 
So starting off, when is the right time to use Drupal RTX? So some of these challenges you may uh, encounter, you've got these projects or jobs, and you're trying to come in at or under budget, meeting the requirements of the project, um, and choosing the right technology for that. There may be situations where you need to have, we have various size projects, um, where it may not be suitable to set up multiple base stations, a VRS network may not be available, um, or internet connectivity could be spotty. Um, you, you may also be in situations where you're working, uh, for example, in, in the US, if you're working in multiple states, you don't necessarily want to have to get a subscription for each VRS in each, every state. You can have a single RTX subscription that will provide you with corrections throughout the whole country. Now, in these situations, um, definitely it depends on uh, several variables, but subscription-based satellite uh, or internet delivered corrections can be a suitable solution. Uh, another challenge that we see a lot, um, this is typically for radio-based customers using RTK, is a uh, line of sight issue or obstructions that caused interference and, uh, and the unusability of the RTK solution. It can be caused by obstructions or terrain, uh, say hills, um, you could, or even for distance from the base station. Um, there are also areas or situations where there are interference. We see this particularly at airports that um, do interfere with the radio spectrum that doesn't allow you to receive your corrections. Again, the satellite delivered correction, in this case, something like RTX that's delivered on that same L-band spectrum that GNSS and GPS is using will help mitigate a lot of these issues. Um, another, another alternative is internet-based, and in this case, if VRS is available in, this, in the area that you're working in, that's certainly a, a suitable solution. However, if it's not, uh, RTX can also be used. This third slide, speaking about challenges, is poor cellular coverage or lack of VRS network. So if a primary requirement to using VRS is internet connectivity, and the region that you're working in must have a VRS network to begin with. However, this isn't the case in all areas. For example, if you're in a remote job site where typically um, cellular connectivity may not exist, and mo more than likely a VRS network may not exist. You can get your corrections via satellite um, and achieve high accuracy positioning. Talking more about Trimble RTX, there is, we have a portfolio of different services available at different accuracy levels that um, are available at different price points as well. So depending on your application needs and the accuracy you need for a particular application or particular job, you could choose the level of accuracy that would be most suitable. Our top tier service is Centerpoint RTX, and that's that two centimeter level horizontal, five centimeter level vertical accuracy, which is sub inch horizontal and sub two inches vertical. Um, and then we have our decimeter level accuracy field point RTX at 10 centimeters sub four inch and viewpoint RTX, which is our sub-meter, 50 centimeter, and sub-20 inch solution. All of these services are available via satellite and IP, and the availability is global. Now, the last column in this chart is referring to convergence time. I'm gonna spend a minute talking about that. Convergence time refers to the amount of time it takes before your receiver's positioning solution achieves the stated accuracies in this table. This is a one-time event at, at the beginning of your day when you turn on your receiver. So you'll turn on your receiver, wait a set amount of time until it achieves full accuracy. You don't have to be static, you can be moving at the same time, and once it achieves full accuracy, you're said to be converged. You'll maintain convergence throughout the entire day as long as you haven't lost your correction source. If you do lose your correction source for short amounts of time, uh, it will quickly re reconverge. But if you lose it for a long amount of time, then it'll have to go through the whole, whole convergence process again. Now, with that being said, the convergence time is actually very good today. Um, we've been minimizing this over the years. So if you look at center point RTX and field point RTX, globally, it's 15 minutes. 
And then we have some fast regions where it's less than one minute. So you're essentially ready to work by the time you've finished setting up your job. And I'll show you the, the maps in more detail on the next slides. This slide shows our global coverage map for satellite delivered services. I should, I should uh, reiterate that internet avail availability is available anywhere. So as long as you have access to an internet connection, you can still receive the corrections by internet. So for satellite, we've got separate beams covering different regions. And these are all geostationary satellites, so directly above the equator. And as you get it further up in latitude and further down in latitude, um, your visibility to see that geostationary satellite becomes limited. Therefore, you can see at the very top of this map, the coverage cuts off. Um, if you look at North America and Europe, there are dark red and dark green regions. These are the fast regions where the convergence time is less than a minute. And uh, I have some better pictures of that on the next slide. So before I, I get into that, there's a couple of points I do want to mention. Uh, I know we're, we're a North America US centric audience today. So um, one thing I'll mention is Alaska, we don't have satellite coverage today, but we do have internet coverage. In Hawaii, we don't have satellite coverage either, but again, we have internet coverage. In the uh, Pacific Islands, we, have, we do have both satellite and internet coverage. However, you're fast, coverage will be limited. Um, and then in the uh, Caribbean area, there is both satellite and, and internet as well. And there is fast in some of those regions and, and there is no fast in other regions. Um, if you do need more details, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, one more aspect that we have is um, marine coverage. Uh, we have services available for marine usage. So for both on land and um, coastal and offshore. And as of today, our marine coverage, as if you look at this map, it goes out about 20 kilometers from the continental um, continents that you see here. So sorry, from the continents that you see here, 20 kilometers into the, into the ocean. We're able to cover that. We're also able to cover all inland body waterways as well. For our offshore service today, we have the Gulf of Mexico covered, as well as the Persian Gulf. Um, for, for some users, you, you may have some technical issues if you're working close to the coast um, and you have a land subscription. However, that is a fairly simple support issue to resolve. And if you get in contact with our support team, we're, we'll be able to resolve that. So as I mentioned, this is a zoomed in area of a, our fast coverage. We have continental or coast to coast coverage available in the continental US and most of Southern Canada, at least the populated areas. And then we have quite a bit of coverage in Western Europe. So to reiterate, this coverage dictates where the convergence time is less than one minute. Elsewhere, we still have coverage, but the convergence time will be closer to the 15 minutes. Another overview of our services. So the highest level of accuracy, the smaller circle in this uh, bullseye chart, uh, the more accuracy you get, the higher the cost is, and here's a breakdown of our costs. All right, I'm going to continue talking about the, that's it, all I have for RTX. So I'm going to continue talking about the fuller mapping and GIS solution and how RTX integrates into that. So here's a, uh, um, a few receivers, Genesis receivers, that are able to take advantage of Trimble RTX. Starting on the far left, we've got uh, your lower accuracy de devices, um, your entry level devices. You've got the R1 pictured, um, which is a standalone that can connect to your BYOD. And then you've got the EM100, which does connect to a number of our controllers and handhelds. Uh, both of these devices are able to use viewpoint RTX, which is that sub meter level service. In the center there that you've got the integrated GNSS that's directly integrated into the handheld, the TDC 150 and the Geo 7X. The Geo 7X is IP only whereas the TDC 50 is able to do LBAN and IP. And then on the right you've got the more traditional integrated 
receivers, the R2, the Spectre Precision SP60, and then the uh, R, R10, R12 uh, series models on the far right. Um, at the very bottom on the right is the Catalyst system, which uh, has a different subscription model, but does utilize RTX technology and also utilizes VRS Now technology. Um, I, I do want to mention that the technology and the services are available for both Trimble and Spectra geospatial products. Here's just a, a few of the different softwares that are capable of working with Trimble RTX. Um, again, the, these softwares uh, would work with the hardware that supports RTX and then the software is the user interface. Um, a key component of the software um, has been dealing and configuring coordinate systems. And I would like to mention that over the last six months or so, we've done some significant enhancements for coordinate system support for mapping and GIS software. What this does is allows RTX positions to be localized into your local coordinate system. Uh, we are aware that this has been a barrier in the past and we have done a lot to address that. In addition to that, we do also have vertical elevations available right now. Um, uh, the uh, ortho orthometric elevations as well as the ellipsoidal elevations. Um, and in general, you, so you see a number of software available here, but RTX is mo somewhat software ag agnostic. Uh, so it will be working with a lot of Trimble branded software as well as third uh, party branded software that is capable of using the Trimble and Spectra GNSS receivers. Okay, I've got another poll question here. So again, please, it's the same link as before. Please go ahead and jump in there and take a second to answer the question. So based on what you've learned today or what, you, what your experience has been with RTX, what are some, your biggest barriers to using Trimble RTX today? Okay, we got a lot of answers coming in, so I will leave that open for another few seconds. So if you would like to answer the poll question, please visit the link in the chat now. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close that voting now. So it looks like the majority of people said that they have no barriers, which is awesome. Um, but we did have some people say that the vertical accuracy is not great enough. And then the second most pop or the third actually most popular answer was that it does not match my national reference frame. Okay, so yeah, thank you, Marissa. It's very good to see that there are no barriers for a lot of you. So. I I hope that you're able to use it today and take advantage of that. Uh, for those of you that are stating that vertical accuracy is not great enough, um, certainly I understand that that is a limitation, especially coming coming from RTK or VRS where the vertical accuracy is, is quite good. Um, it is something that we're aware of as a barrier and um, certainly on our plate to address. There may there may be some evolution there, but it's it's something that's under research. Uh, I would also love to hear any input about the specific applications where the vertical accuracy is not being uh, addressed with, with our current spec and what level of precision is needed um, in order to address those application needs. Um, and then the, the third one about not matching your national reference frame. Um, as I mentioned, we have made some significant coordinate system enhancements over the last six months in a number of our software. So I hope you're able to try that out and see how well that works for you today. Um, it is quite good. And um, if, there, if there are any issues, again, feel free to reach out and we can try to help with that. I'm gonna continue on and uh, I'll be passing it off to York, who's gonna be speaking to you about some customers 
that he has been worked with, working with or worked with in the past that are using RTX today. Thank you, Jeffy. So yeah, we've seen you know, for Duncan Parnell, the ability for various customers to use RTX. And I just threw a few names up on the screen on this particular slide uh, with the point to help people understand that you know, we're seeing customers from a whole wide variety of customers that are taking advantage of it from um, organizations at the federal level. So you see Federal Aviation Administration using it up here. You know, they're using it because they have to go around to different locations all over the US and being able to maintain the same consistent accuracy was very important to them. So RTX became a great solution. I won't go into discussion of all of these, but then we have municipalities using it. Um, often those municipalities are using it because either they don't have good cellular connectivity in their entire municipality, or more likely they're in an area where they don't have any other local VRS option. A couple other companies on here are international based and do work internationally. Some of them are doing work in uh, where topography does not allow for consistent internet connectivity. And then um, I spoke with our customer specific at Albemarle County Service Authority. So they're a water authority in central Virginia. Um, prior to using RTX, they were doing post processing. And so they found that with using RTX, it cut out that ability or that requirement to go in and do the post processing once they collected the data. So allow them to very much streamline their process and with the corrections done in the field with RTX, it became much more advantageous for that. Um, and the other thing that I would point out that I realize I don't really show here are those of our customers that are using the Trimble R1 or the EM100 with an RTX subscription. That's a great way to take what's spec as a sub-meter receiver and be able to get pretty consistent 50 centimeter level accuracy um, for customers that can work out in the open. So we've started to see it used quite a bit by different customers. As Tofik mentioned, within the past six to 10 months or so, there have been significant improvements with the mapping software. So both with Trimble Mobile Manager, which means Therefore, applications in the Esri apps of collector and field maps, but then also with Teraflex, we're able to handle the coordinate system adjustments needed to use RTX. So there's no issues now in most all the softwares for bringing that data in. So it's become a really applicable solution for many of our customers. So thank you, Tofik. I'll turn it back over to you, sir. Thanks, York. So I'm gonna, I've got a couple more slides left, uh, just really closing off here. I'd like to mention the current promotions that we have. So if you have any of those receivers that I showed earlier, and then there's a few others as well, your receiver is RTX capable today. You just need to get a subscription. And we have a dedicated website where you can get a free 30-day trial. You go directly here or even contact your, your local reseller. They'll be able to set you up with a 30-day trial for you to try out Trimble RTX on your receiver. In addition to that, if you are uh, interested in purchasing new hardware with an RTX bundled together, uh, we do have two options available. It's on the submeter uh, devices, the R1 and the EM100, and there's significant savings associated with that. Uh, for any of this, feel free to get in touch with your reseller. Um, and I do have the contact information on this slide. Um, so Duncan Parnell, York specifically, if you want to get in touch with him, also links to various social media um, and their website as well. I also in did include a link to our website where you can find out more information about corrections, uh, including VRS Now and RTX. With that being said, um, I think we can open it up to questions now. If anybody has any questions, feel free to type it into the yeah. Um, into the chat window, please. So I've, I've got, I see one question from Ross uh, asking about RTX availability in the Cook Islands. So I'm going to check my map.
and I'll get back to you. In, in the meantime, the, let's see if there's another question that I can address. Jim Jacobson did ask if the presentation will be available afterwards, and yes, there will be a recording made available to everybody. So Cook Islands will have um, will have limited satellite coverage availability because of its location. Um, it will have full internet coverage. Um, however, the satellite coverage will be limited, and there there may be some limit uh, limitations with performance based on off of that as well. Um, I have a question from Chad. We have been using VRS for several years. Our biggest challenge is taking shots on a site with a tree canopy. If I understand correctly, RTX will, would most likely not be the answer to this issue, correct? So um, I'll just I'll read off something R Russell has said. Chad, if you're using Tremble Terraflex, you have the option to use an LTI laser rangefinder and an offset position methodology. But to address your question more specifically, RTX won't necessarily per perform better than VRS, especially in challenging environments. So if, if that is one of your biggest challenges, RTX wouldn't directly address that. Um, so if you're, if you're in a situation where today VRS is not providing adequate positioning, RTX doesn't necessarily address that. The only case where it might help is if somehow you're losing your correction source, which I don't think is the case. That's tree canopy typically does not cause that. Let me add something to that, Tofik. So that's true for a lot of the VRS coverage areas. It really depends on where you are. An example, so the geographic region, I interact with customers in the Virginia area, um, primarily some in West Virginia as well. So the VRS networks, the local ones we can take advantage of, only correct GPS and GLONASS satellites. So that I often use that as a point to show customers why they may want to consider RTX. Because for most of our receivers, not only is RTX going to correct GPS and GLONASS, but also as the Galileo satellites in there. So that means, in effect, I'll have better productivity using RTX than I might if I can only correct for GPS and GLONASS satellites. Okay, that's that's a very good good point, York. So yeah, you can certainly take advantage of more satellites, which which may give you a more reliable and robust solution in these challenging environments. A question from Michael Green: Are the R six R slash eight with the TSC three adaptable to RTX? So the R six and the R eight series are not compatible with RTX, so we would not be able to support that. Looks like that's it for questions right now. Please feel free to type in any additional questions into the chat box. And folks are welcome to unmute yourself as well. If you wanna just verbalize a question for two feet, feel free to do that as well. We're happy to take those questions verbally. Great. Well, Tofik, we certainly appreciate your time today and your expertise. Um, as a reminder, this session is recorded so that uh, Marissa will send out a link to those who have attended today as well as those who just signed up, and that should be coming out within the next couple of days. Um, but Tofik, we appreciate your expertise and your time uh, kind of educating us today on RTX. No problem, York. You're welcome. And thank you and Duncan Parnell for having me today. And thank you to all of our audience for taking the time to listen to us. Uh, Jim sent a message about sharing the link. Absolutely, yeah, when Marissa sends out the link, you're welcome to pass that along. Uh, but then as well, there'll be a spot on the Duncan Parnell website on our blog area where all of our asset series webinars are available and this will be included on that as well. So thank you everyone. Have a great afternoon and a great rest of your day.